want to start off by thanking the Society for inviting me to participate. I am extremely grateful and I would also like to thank Dr. Palleiro for introducing me. Let me warn you that my English might not be the best, but I will try my hardest. De Pajada, an improvised oral poetic duel in Latin American contexts. The improvised poetic duel phenomenon is shown to us across a huge geographic dissemination and a great time depth. Nowadays, it can be found all over the world with different degrees of popularity and generally sung. It is an expression that belongs to the realm of poetic improvisation, an ancient and universal art that has been minimized by the academy and has only been studied as of the first half of the 20th century with works on oral poetry of Russians and Yugoslavians in the 1920 and 1930s, carried out by Lija Murko in France and Milman Parry in the United States of America. In such a broad spectrum, Ibero-America displays a wide variety of expressions both in the secular and religious world, as well as in the forms of isolated phenomenon or as part of ceremonies, games, popular celebrations, commemorations, outdoor performances, and so on. On this particular occasion, we will refer to the improvised poetical duel sung as a unique and isolated phenomenon, accompanied by string instruments widely disseminated and rooted throughout the region. Depending on the country, this genre adopts different names as well as different musical styles, structures and contents. We will start by focusing on the case called Pajada or Pajada de Contrapunto, specifically found in Argentina, Chile and Uruguay. The delay of academic studies and interest in improvisation may have a number of causes. Undoubtedly, one of the most relevant is the scarce interest that popular manifestations have had in general, particularly those whose primary mode of transmission is based on oral tradition and whose core element is not memorization or repetition, but rather improvisation and innovation. These are the consequences of the establishment of the cultural historical school throughout the Western world. This school encouraged finding the purest version of traditions by exercising memorization and repetition. Studies in Latin America began in 1990s mainly driven by the repentist poets, those that improvise, improvise their poems, who gradually became aware that they were part of a common phenomenon as inter-American gatherings or contests were held between poets from Europe, usually Spain, and Latin America. It's not, it is noteworthy that both Spanish and Cuban scholars as West as well as poets made great efforts to implement these activities and names as Marian, Maximiano Trapero from Spain and Alexis Díaz Pimienta from Cuba firmly set the curse that these activities took in favor of the dissemination and study of this phenomenon. In all these countries, the sound poetic duel used free verse and later adopted different strophic systems with a preference for two types of stanzas. The quatrain, four lines with rhyme, with rhyme A, B, C, B, and the tenth, ten lines with rhyme A, B, B, A, A, C, C, D, D, C. Both are strophic models with eight syllable lines an assonant rhyme, highly characteristic of the Spanish language. 
It should be noted that <coughs> unlike English poetry, which measures poetic lines by metric feet, Spanish poetry measures poetic lines by syllables. Over time, the death would become prevalent throughout Latin America. At the same time, the Pajador changed his life from being a rural roving bard, wandering in search of an opponent, similarly to the European ministers of the Middle Ages, to becoming a stage performer. He entered through the outskirts of cities, participating in festivals and celebrations, <coughs> thus gaining great recognition for their art. From the beginning of the 20th century, as they gradually joined the cultural industries, the Pachador captured new audiences without drifting away from his rural origins. With time of greater or lesser visibility, this art gradually took root and developed its own particular form, adapting to the context and environment. It assumed multiple roles, or amusing or entertaining, expressing opinions, disseminating ideas, provoking reflection or hilarity, exciting, recalling or summoning. These performers actively participated in independence wars, political life, and social conflicts of their respective countries, generally placing themselves close to the most unprotected and vulnerable populations, forming a type of popular poetic art of great recognition, distinguished by its improvised nature, which had its greatest development towards the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century in the countries we will refer to. The Pajada, or Paja, as it's known in Chile, is currently considered a residual phenomenon that has sometimes been marginalized and even chased resulting in a self-referential and deeply evocative song. It has undergone a process of crystallization, retaining terms used in rural speech <coughs> and also some specific musical genres, such as Chilean verse, which still retains significantly dated traces. We refer to the psalm-like style and characteristic of its melody and to the so-called guitarron, an instrument dated back to the European Renaissance. This instrument is a 25-string chordophone with a complicated playing technique, with part of its string in wire and four untuning strings, which gives it a very particular tone color. Lately, it is being replaced by the seven-string guitar the Spanish guitar version so widespread in Latin America. Both the Pajada and the Paja have a three-stage structure consisting of A, the introduction in which the poets introduce themselves or greet the audience mentioning the place or the context. B, the core being the challenge itself and C, the ending, which leads to the conclusion of the contest and when each poet generally mentions their own name. This structure is widely spread among improvising schools worldwide, where this type of discursive genre is practiced, and it can be narrative, descriptive, expository, argumentative, depending on the development of the event and on the context. This three-stage structure was rich after this song struggled to survive in the face of the arrival of new musical genres, innovative forms of entertainment and the mass media, all of which subjugated all aesthetics and ways of life and entertainment. This new phase led to the reaffirmation and strengthening of a standard that was already being transmitted via oral tradition and to the emergence of representative figures in this artistic field who even then 
are brought to the present by permanently evoking them as astounding art role models. We will now listen to a number of examples that illustrate how the three-stage structure develops with poets of three different countries analyzed in our case study. The introduction. It is, it is usually developed with the thinking of a tenth by each participant. Two Argentinian payadores introduce themselves in this way. The challenge is also called counterpoint or development. It has no established length and it builds up to be the highest tension moment in the paja or payada. The challenge can be performed from antagonistic positions that have to be supported and defended, for example, God and Evil day and night, or through a dialogue in which both payadores discuss their respective viewpoints without confrontation. Opposition duels are the most common. This is the moment when the payador will have to display their best skill as an improviser poet. Those master while learning from senior colleagues, stimulating further readings, enriching his vocabulary, seeking practice with valuable peers, sharpening their observation skills briefly with while growing. In this intermediate phase of the payada, though some already disappeared, different styles can be found so that the duel may become more attractive. In early days, the style known as questions and answers was widely used, which was also present in, an, in other past and current improvisation traditions. I will now read two quatrains in Spanish that were extracted from the tradition in order to illustrate the type of humor used. Venite pa' acá, muchacho, ahorita de responder. ¿Cuántos pelos tiene un gato cuando acaba de nacer? La pregunta que me ha hecho se la quiero responder. Si no se le cayó ni uno, todito se ha de tener. The farewell occasionally exceeds two tenths, each one performed by a payador. They may appeal to the topic discussed, greet the audience, their partner, and finally mention their own name. This last section comes from very old times in Western improvised poetry, and it is used as a means of circling back and endorsing was developed during the counterpoint itself. We will listen to how Manuel Sánchez from Chile playing a guitarron 
and Jose Curbelo from Uruguay playing his guitar close their payada. General, the whole payada or paya ranges from 15 to 20 minutes, since it usually takes place in the framework of organized events, where several of these payadas are performed, alternating both leading performance as well as their type. It is always an act of artistic performance that displays an ingenious mode of communication before an audience able to evaluate their skills and efficiency. Bauman, 1994. This implies a number of shared artistic and ethical codes which are expressed and interact. Moreno Cha, 1997. The American theater director, Richard Schechner, in his work entitled Between Theater and Anthropology, where he reflects on his vast experience in different scenarios in the Eastern and Western world, defined a sequence of seven stages for theatrical performances, which we also find among the payadores in connection with their artistic activities. Training. It is generally produced during the payador's training stage, during their youth, and consists of practicing improvisation in their leisure time. Many do so orally, others in writing. Another aspect of this stage consists in the encouragement of reading as a means of acquiring knowledge and broadening their vocabulary. Workshops. In this country, the most common training method was through the observation of the general great figures rather than through direct and systematic contact with an experienced payador. Workshops on improvisation have gradually appeared over the last 20 or 30 years, while in other regions such as the Caribbean, for instance in Venezuela or in Panama, this practice has been in place for more time now, and in some cases it has been institutionalized as in Cuba. Rehearsal. It basically consists of the tuning and of the instruments and the sound test when acoustic amplification is needed. Warm up. This part is very personal and varying according to each payador's choice. Some of them will play their instruments to warm up their fingers. Others will think of ideas to develop or discuss during the performance. Others will agree with their partner on the topics to be discussed and the type of stanza they will use and so on. Performance. It includes the act of performance itself, currently framed in the middle of complex shows that include other activities, either musical or not. Performance. Cool down. It includes all the attitudes that will guide the payador back 
from his fictional life to his ordinary life, trying to reduce the stressful circumstances generated by the pajada. This may consist of dressing up, putting the instrument in its case, smoking or drinking, greeting colleagues and the audience, etc. It's also common for them to participate in a meal with all those who have taken part in the event. Aftermaths. Concerning this artistic activity, there are short-term aftermaths, such as interviews for the press, the radio or the TV, that are carried out immediately after the performance and also journalist interviews or academic papers that may appear later on. This is the sequence of the ritual action of the Pajada or Paja. According to Schechner, we face a performance similar to that in Western theater, when the actor is transported, transported to another situation from where he returns later on the settle in his ordinary mundane reality. During the performance, they represent themselves as artists in the field of poetry and music, thus playing their own role. But the concept of becoming a pajador is so strict that in order to be accepted as such, one must prove the ability to perform a counterpoint pajada in the presence of peers and audience. This is the most demanding step, and the moment referred to as baptism by San Pajadores in Argentina, in a clear reference to the Christian event that marks the admission to a new status. Only then will they have entered this realm, bearing some emotional empathy, which they will develop by displaying the skills related to poetic repentism memory, rhetorical ability, and many others. The most attractive element for the audience is a poetic duel that involves determine, determining who is the best, the fittest, a factor at the core of the competition, the confrontation. The history of this discursive genre has been very diverse and its ability to adapt to different contexts and times over the centuries has been invaluable. While in Argentina and Uruguay the Pajada has kept certain structural stability, in the neighboring country, Chile, new ways of excelling this poetic tradition has been sought, while it's preserving its competitive nature as well. This happened in, this, in the 1980s, when some popular musicians and poets gathered as a response to the risk of extinction. The most innovative feature was incorporation of the audience in certain games, having concerts with several performances on stage at the same time. The poetic challenge had found new pathways and the sequence was different for each game. The stages of presentation and farewell were over, as well as the resource provided by the questions and answers. Changes were made in the intermediate phase. The following resources were added. Forces food, a specific line of words that the pajador is obliged to introduce in a stanza, and personification, whereby the pajador adopts the role of a well-known personality and speaks on this behalf. The following example of personification shows the pajador Pedro Janes representing the Nobel Prize in Literature, the Chilean Pablo Neruda, in counterpart with another pajador.
some of these improvisation styles have been passed on to poets from other latitudes due to the way they stimulate the discourse and leverage from incorporating the audience into the performances. As we can see, the poetic challenge of the region in question has conquered different styles. Some of them are more narrative, other more descriptive, other more argumentative, bearing a greater or smaller dialogic nature. Each one proceeds along with the sequences established by the standards and the tradition of the general itself, adopting a typical custom depending on the context where they are, and also incorporating a regional rural lexicon, formulas and proverbs known to all. Although there are numerous common features between the phenomenon of the improvised dual, dual as it is performed in Chile and Argentina, Uruguay, we must point out that the tradition that has framed them to date has been different and they emerge in the Latin American scenario as two differentiated schools. In the case of the Chilean payador, they come from the so-called canto a lo poeta. In other words, poets like singing. A poetic musical expression active throughout the central region of this country. The tradition of Chilean popular poetry perceives this sphere as divided into two real, great realms, distinguishing between singing to humans and singing to the divine, as it was performed in medieval Spain. Whereas the Pajador singing is an expression of the singing to humans. The Chilean Paja shares with the School of the Rio de la Plata its traits of poetic controversial duel, and it has followed a more or less similar development. The great difference is that the Chilean expression was taken with enormous interest by the academic milieu. This was key to achieve institutionalization and survival, gaining greater dissemination and appraisal of this art in the most diverse environments. The tradition of improvising poetry in the region of the Rio de la Plata and surrounding areas, namely Argentina and Uruguay, is immersed in the sphere of traditionalism. This is a name given to a position developed under the umbrella of ruling Romanticism, whose purpose was to uphold the traits of a nation endangered by the strong, mainly European immigration, which had begun over the last three decades of the 19th century. It was a reaction that set off by trying to revitalize elements belonging to its heritage in order to oppose coming changes. With this purpose chosen as a symbol, the gaucho as a rural character was introduced to the Western world by the book El Gaucho Martin Fierro. This work, essentially apagada, generated countless other expressions, including the appearance of numerous novels and plays based on the figure of the gaucho. Through them, the so-called gaucho literature, or simply gauchesque, has done. In the Pajada, the poetic topics are as a wide range, ranging as life itself, universal as well as local themes are dealt with, as well as humorous, historical, dramatic, and other issues which are always displayed in the intermediate phase of the Pajada. Functions, functions as news, patriotic and ideological poetry seem to be the seeds of the activity. In addition, social, intimate, recreational, reflective and didactic functions, among others, have been also incorporated. The appearance of the female figure performing this popular art, traditionally being performed by men, has brought about new themes, such as love, motherhood, 
and family, as well as a more intimate and sensitive style. A great example is Argentinian Marta Swind, who is the most outstanding payadora of the region. Strict standards govern both schools we have been referring to, showing great coincidences which also reach other latitudes of the Latin American sphere. There are unwritten standards that make up a true code of conduct governing this work and to which the Pajadores adhere to us intense, intensely as their ability, training and experience allow them to. This code relies on having an essential ability developed through a lifetime, poetic improvisation. This is a government by the mandatory requirement of applying a specific rhyme and meter. The correct, correct use of language, the master in playing the guitar or guitarron, and the ability to sing. Thus, knowledge, sharpness, depth of thought, rhetorical ability, and verbal wit, among many other factors, are tested. A knowledgeable audience is the first re recipient of the singing and will finally decide who is the winner of the poetic duel by its applause and approval gestures. The improvised poetic discourse is supported by the musical discourse to which we have not yet considered too. And in this regard, these two schools we have referred to provide different styles. In Chile, there are a number of melodies transmitted orally that are commonly used and known by all. In turn, each person may improvise his or her own lines on them. These melodies, generally called intonations, strictly belong to the realm of canto a lo poeta, poet-like singing, and there are preferences as to which to use according to their function and context in which they are performed. This is the highest degree of poetic improvisation in which, without any pause, ten line stanzas are uttered without any instrumental interlude, unlike other repentist traditions. Some payadores display great speed, making it difficult to follow their timing. In international gatherings of repentist poets, both Argentinians and Uruguayans are renowned for it, as well as for their ability to argue with forcefulness. The quintessential payador is the one who has made a way of fly out of, this, of his art and understands the challenge as a ritual in which some of the, his greatest values are at stake, prestige and excellence. So far, we have referred to two schools of Repentism that have had a relatively analogous development based on, in, on protagonists and audiences from the rural environment involved in the independence wars from Spain and in the struggles for national reorganization, always favoring the most popular sectors. They have conquered urban audiences while penetrating the mass media and have become paid popular artists. The growing visibility of this phenomenon and the academic interest it has aroused has led to the discovery of its remarkable globalization, which continues to amaze the international gatherings that have been taking place among Latin American poets and those from the European Mediterranean basin over the last 30 years. Since early colonial times, in their long and complex pathway, the payadores have evolved from being wandering bards generally illiterate people improvising without any meter or rhyme, to becoming popular artists who turn to writing, educating and training their audiences, combining their knowledge and abilities, developing their own type of show. This Sam Poetic Guild has acquired the relevance of the symbolic, 
building identity and forming a transnational community where some poet improvisation has become an art form that has consolidated a community of imagined identity currently acknowledged. This topic has been treated in a book of my authorship, which deals with the phenomenon in a very comprehensive way and from a multidisciplinary approach. Thank you.